Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Softball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Whether you live in rural Iowa or in the big city, the Iowa Network Services family of companies and your local provider are working together to keep you connected by offering technology and business solutions like internet, data networking, and other business services. The INS family of companies keeping communities connected today and tomorrow. Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Softball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Trophies have new homes. It's time to hand out a third. From Rogers Sports Complex and Matera Field and Fort Dodge, it's the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Championships. It's time for softball in Class 3A. It's been a great day of softball so far. The grounds crew is getting ready for this 3A matchup between the defending champion Bondurant Farrar Lady Jays and last year's runner-up, the Clark Lady Indians. Pleasant good afternoon to you. Paul Yeager alongside Laura Leonard here. Fantastic softball so far, and this is a rematch, the only rematch of the day from last year's championship games. Bondurant Farrar looks to do it again. They've got some good players black, and it starts with Emily Wilson. Yeah, Emily Wilson was on the all-tournament team a year ago and is having another great tournament here this year. And she is doing it at the plate. She leads this team. At the plate with a 498 average, she also has quite a bit of pop in that bat. 11 home runs. Now that's four, number four in 3A this year, and number 10 in all of the state. So she's also having a good state tournament here. Three of six with one big home run and three RBIs. And trying to rewrite history from last year and put them on top would be the Clark Indians, and it starts with pitching. And it's a fantastic pitcher, one of the best in the tournament. That's Libby Venus. Yeah, and she has a lot of different pitches, and she throws all of them very, very well. She's very tough to hit. And to tell you how dominant she's been this year in the regular season, 218 strikeouts, only 33 walks. Here in the tournament, 17 strikeouts, only one walk. Last night in the semis, 12 strikeouts. So she needs to have that performance if they want to win it here today. The wind is still a factor, but not quite the deal that it was. Overcast skies, and let's go to public address announcer Jim Stokes for today's introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Harlan Hale Rogers Sports Complex in this 3A championship game between the Lady Jays from Bondurant Farrar and the Indians from Clark. Let's meet the non-starters first for the visitors from Bondurant Farrar. Number two, Lindsay Carter. Number seven, Kenzie Epperly. Number 14, Abby Osborne. And number 15, Emily Campbell. The assistant coaches for the Lady Days are Dustin Rowland and Hannah Baker. And now the starters from Bondurant Farrar. Leading off, playing center field, number 23, Ashley Burrows. The first baseman, number eight, Katie Norton. The shortstop, number 11, Emily Wilson. The pitcher, number 12, Keeley Bycroft. Playing center, number one, Annika Ekstam. Playing left field, number 13, Aaron Handley. The designated player, number 18, Sydney Carroll. 
the, playing second, number five, Isla Ekstam. Playing third, number six, Kenzie Atkins. And the right fielder, number 17, Kenzie Peters. The Lady Jays, are, our head coach is Mr. Roger Rowland. And now the non-starters for the home team from Clark. Number one, Amanda Kindred. Number two, Alex Boyce. Number nine, Hannah Moore. Number 10, Shiana Bedler. Number 11, Sydney Marker. Number 12, Bailey Balkane. Number 17, Brenna Paul. Number 19, Brooke Hen. And number 27, Haley Gilbert. The assistant coaches for Clark are Stacy Ritchie, Brittany Martin, and Carrie Price. Now the starters for Clark. Leading off and playing center field, number 25, Kennedy Kreese. The shortstop, number seven, Vanessa Bakley. The pitcher, number eight, Libby Bemis. Playing first base, number four, Devin Carson. Playing left field, number 22, Carly Robbins. Playing third, number 13, Sarah Andrew. Playing second, number 14, Cindy Redmond. The designated player, number 15, Allie Deutsch. Catching number six, Lexi Carson. Playing right field, the flex, number five, Mackenzie Otto. The head coach for Clark is Ms. Lindsay Dial. Our umpires for this contest are at first base, Mr. Tony Sauer. At third base, Mr. Shannon McWhorter and calling the balls and strikes, the crew chief, Mr. Jeff Tank. <laughs> Ladies, let's play state championship softball. We're ready for class 3A state softball. It was a late night, we're gonna find out how late a little bit later with a third member of our broadcast crew, that's Brent Bloom. Paul Yeager alongside Laura Leonard here as we are right underneath the diamond, basically. We're at field level, just off of home plate, but uh, this Iowa Public Television crew is gonna show you the following players for Bondurant. Ashley Burroughs is in center, Katie Norton at first, Emily Wilson at short, Keeley Bycroft is the pitcher, Annika Exton is the catcher, Aaron Hanley in left, the designated player is Sydney Carroll, Isla Exton at second, Kenzie Atkins at third, and in right field is Kenzie Peters. That's a look at your Bondurant for our Lady Jays, your defending champion, and a member of the Raccoon River Conference, and they are gonna face Clark, and that pitcher right there, Libby Bemis. Libby Bemis is a, has a record of 25 and three, 175 innings pitched, a 1.12 ERA, and opponents are batting 145 against her, Laura. She has a lot of pitches in her arsenal. She really does, and, and she can throw a lot of different ones, and she can throw the, the screwball, she can throw a rise ball, a curve, and a change. Here's the defense for the Lady Indians. At first base is Carson at second, Redmond. Andrew at third, Bakley at short. Left to right, it's uh, Robbins, Priest, and Otto from left to right. We're ready to play here at uh, 2.38. And at the first pitch is bunted foul and out of play on an 0-1 pitch. Now will come in Ashley Burrows, the senior, playing center field. Well, she's a good leadoff hitter. She comes from that left side, can put it down, can handle the bat very well. Just put it in a play and use some speed to get down the line. Second pitch is outside for a ball. And the next one is out there for a ball. Behind the, um, uh, behind the plate today is Jeff Tank. At first is Tony Sauer. And at third is Shannon McWhorter, your umpiring crew. The pitch lifted into the air towards left. Back goes the left fielder, Carly Robbins, to make the catch. And there's one away here in the top of the first. 
What's it going to take for Bondurant and Farrar to win tonight, Laura? Well, what they need to do is have that good, solid defense. You can't afford to make mistakes. You can't afford to have errors in a title game. And then they need to find a way to win. Just do the little things, lay down bunts, take an extra base when they can do that. Just do the little things that will help them get another victory and another state title. The Lady Jays are 22 and 13 at one point this season. They lost seven straight ball games. They were down several times in the season, but as uh, Coach Rowland told us last night, I'm sorry, early this morning, that uh, the girls never doubted. They may have lost seven straight, maybe there was some grumbling in Lady J Nation, but they knew they had a good team, they, were, they had a plan, and here they are playing for a chance to defend their title. Yeah, and, and he said it was more, you know, the, the surrounding people, it wasn't necessarily the team that had really gone, well, throwing in the towel, this might not be our year to get back to state. It was more of the community kind of going, hey, you know what, nice job, it's gonna be an <laughs> okay season, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll get back there next year, and lo and behold, here they are playing for the title, gonna defend their state title from a year ago, and uh, they have such great support at Bondurant for our following this team. Katie Norton at the plate, she's a senior, playing first base today. She's down in the count, one, two, the pitch. Lifted in the air on the infield, but it's drifting towards right. Stepping back is the second baseman, Sydney Redmond, to make the catch, and there's two away on two flyouts. Well, earlier in the day, those would have been a, an adventure for those infielders and outfielders. It certainly has calmed down since early this morning, and those fly balls are a little bit more routine. The wind has died down. It was gusting at 25 this morning. It's now dropped to just 12 miles an hour, and you can definitely tell the difference. I mean, the wind was was shaking things, the tarp around us. Uh, any Anybody that had tarps out in the outfield, any flags, banners, they were moving pretty strong, but uh, now it's just a nice, cool day. The, it is a little hazy. Earlier in the week, there was a forecast of about 92 degrees for today, but it's not that. Ripped down the right, and that's the first hit for the Jays as Emily Wilson gets on board. We talked about her in the open, Laura. Well, she certainly has a hot bat here in the tournament as well as coming into the season. She has led this team, and she's got some pop. You can see that swing, able to hold the hands back and drive it through the shortstop third base hole into left field. Right between Andrew and Bakley. And that'll bring in Keeley Bycroft, who's going to bat from the left-hand side. First pitch is up. And she's up in the count 1-0. Bondurant, Farrar, and Clark. Two schools not too terribly far apart from one another. In the central part of the state, Bondurant, Farrar, northeast of Des Moines. Bondurant is where the new high school is. We talked about that in the 1A game, about new schools, new fields, attitudes. That was the story at Key. Come backer to Bemis. The throw over to first. To Carson erases the Jays runner and ends the inning. One hit, one left. We've played half an inning. No score between Bondurant Farrar. Clark is coming up. Well, a good quick inning for Clark to get themselves a little bit of time under their belt, maybe shake out some nerves, and now the opportunity to get to the plate and hit. Let's take a look at the order for the Clark Lady Indians. Kennedy Kreese, the center fielder, bats first. Second is Vanessa Bakley. The pitcher, Libby Bemis, bats third at cleanup is Devin Carson. The left fielder, Carly Robbins. Then Sarah Andrew, the third baseman. Second baseman, Sydney Redman, who made a catch there in that top half of the inning. The designated player is Allie Deutsch. Lexi Carson is the catcher, and Mackenzie Otto is your flex player in this lineup. Keely Bycroft brings in an 18 and nine record, 169 innings pitched, an ERA of 2.44. Opponents are batting 272. Some pitchers in this tournament, Laura, have ERAs under one. She's in the championship game, but we talked about the competition she played. What's that say about her? Let's take a look at the defense quick before we get into that point. Norton at first, Exton at second, Wilson at short, Atkins at third. Hanley, Burroughs, and Peters left to right and behind the plate is Anna Exton. Blue Jays in their blue tops, black pants, high black socks. 
White letters on the name, white trim. Clark and their uh, more of a traditional baseball style top. The button up jersey up the front, black pants and that maroon color and the black numbers with white trim. First pitch is a strike. Kennedy Crease steps in, batting 402. Takes the second pitch off speed in there for a strike. What do you think about the stats for Bycroft? Does it? Do you read into the her ERA much? I, you know, I don't. I, she's come up against some good competition here in the tournament, and the ERA for her two games here in the tournament, 1.93. But, you know, when you have a team that has the, the power and, and the potency to be able to score a lot of runs, you can afford to give up a few extra runs. And so her team is certainly backing her up at the plate and putting up a lot of crooked numbers on the scoreboard. And she's giving up a few, but hey, they're, they're playing for the title. Can't argue with that. And I, <laughs> interesting conversation with Coach Roger Rowland after the game last night. Ball lifted just beyond the second baseman. Exton and in for a hit, getting the first hit of the game for Clark is Kennedy Crease. One aboard here with Bakley coming up. You see the great bat control. Didn't take a full swing, just punched it out over the drawn in infield to start the inning. All scores the same in the book. You yeah. know, it looks the same, but you get on base and it's an effective way. And that's what you want in a leadoff hitter, somebody that can handle the bat very well. But back to the pitcher by Croft on to first for Katie Norton, and there's one away. What would be the keys for Clark to win today, Laura? Well, they need to have this big game perspective, and what, what we mean by that is, you know, don't make this game bigger than what it is. They were in this position a year ago, got beat. Don't make it out to be more than what it is in the rematch, and then they need to flush the past, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that all means, but they need to put last year's game behind them and think about what is the here and now. Bemis rips it foul just off the reach between her coach, Lindsay Deal, and the third baseman for Bondurant, Atkins. No ball, one strike as they chase that ball down. All, all, no souvenirs here in the ways of softball today. If you hit one in the stands, you cannot take it home. It's I not know. like being at a baseball game. As much as these fans would like to keep them, I'm <laughs> sure. They, <laughs> they, do get a, they do have to return them. Swung on and missed. If you want a souvenir, the union will sell you a T-shirt. <laughs> and they're good-looking T-shirts this are. year. The 0-2. Ripped. Dived and stopped. Pl force play at third. Gets past the third baseman, Atkins. Oh, and Crease missed an opportunity there, probably to get home. But Bemis is on board with a single. That was a hit all the way. They were trying to get the lead runner. It was a tough play from Wilson on to Atkins, and I, even a good throw was going to have a hard time getting her. It would have been very close. That was a great athletic play by Wilson to backhand that and keep that ball in the infield. Otherwise, a run would have scored. So she did save the run by diving and keeping that ball in the dirt here in the infield. Crease is at first. Bemis is at second. I'm sorry. Crease is at third. Bemis at second. Devin Carson at the dish. The pitch lifted in the air. Foul and out of play. And that's one that even if you could have gotten a beat on it, I think you would let it drop anyway because your momentum's going away from the play. That runner could have tagged up and you would have had to turn, plant, and throw, and that run could have scored. So uh, even though it wasn't catchable, that's a situation where you have to think about that when it's up in the air. The 1-1 one -one is bunted back to Bycock. Shovels it home, good pass the catcher. One runs in, here comes the second run. And it's going to be safe at the play. Two run score on the bunt. Crease and Bemis, and it's a 2-0 lead for Clark here in the bottom of the first. Now putting the pressure on early, runner on third, lay down the bunt. Runners going on contact is perfectly placed because the defense was playing back, so they get the one run in. The ball scoots by Exdam, and the second run comes in underneath the tag. Half a beat later. That is a, uh, that's an out, but that's why they play the game. The first pitch is in there for a ball. It was a late night for both of these teams, and we'll find out how late and some of the things they did after the ball game with Brent Bloom. He'll be along here in just a little bit to fill you in on that. Count even up at one and one to Carly Robbins. 
Robbins playing left. At second is Devin Carson. She had the single that scored two. Rips it in the hole, past third base, past a diving Atkins. And Robbins is on first. Boy, they're, they're getting the C and I hits. They're finding the openings and punching the ball through, taking advantage of it. That ball up in the zone a little bit, and they're not able to get in and get a glove on it and keep it in the infield, but the run did not score. Making the way out to talk with his team. There you see Lindsey Deal talking with her players, but coming meeting out at center circle is Roger Rowland. Roger's been at uh, the state tournament before last year with Bon Durant. Uh, this won't be a five run inning, okay? Let's just throw her out a second. Let's just throw out, play one. Just throw her out. She scores, she scores. We'll get three, and we'll come in and we'll take our chances in six innings to score three runs. Roger Rowland, good advice. Very calm demeanor there. Didn't run out, just kind of saunters in, saunters out to kind of let them know, hey, body language means a lot from a coach to a team. You know, I think teams play off of their coaches' emotions and, and what they do, and especially their, their body language. If they get all fired up and, and hyped up, then the team might do that, and then they might get a little tight and a little nervous. But he's very calm and just one of those uh, attitudes and one of those personalities that he can calm down a team. Run comes home. They get the out at second. But scoring is Devin Carson, and it's 3-0. However, the Jays concede the run. I think that was the play the whole time. As they get the out, they play hot box down there between first and second, getting thrown out as Robbins there. The tag applied. And as you heard, Coach Rowland, we do have the coaches mic. We have the home plate umpire mic. We're able to listen in at certain points. We're not listening for in-game strategy, but we like to hear what they have to say at center circle or to their team. And the strikeout is recorded of Sarah Andrews. So the out is recorded, but Clark strikes first with three runs in the first. Three nothing is our score as the Lady Jays will try to make a dent into this run. There's a lot of ball game to be played during the nice bright daylight. The lights are not off. Not the case last night. That wasn't the case last night, was it, Brent Bloom? It was not, Paul. A three and a half hour rain delay in the middle of the afternoon pushed the start times back for the Class 3A semifinals to 10.30, and the Clark game did not start until 11 o'clock. That means the game did not end until 11.50 and 12.20 is when the Clark game ended. But good news, these teams do stay locally here at Iowa Central Community College in the dorms. They were in bed by 1.30, I was told. The bad news for the coaches, they had to do laundry until 3.30. It's always the coaches who get stuck with the bad stuff, but everybody fully rested and ready for the final today, guys. And Lindsay Deal told us that after the game last <laughs> night that she goes, well, I still have to go do laundry. Kind of asked her if she's going to sleep tonight. And it was laundry <laughs> over scouting. Well, you got to have clean players. <laughs> I, that's the way I figure. You can't have smelly uniforms. So I would have voted for laundry as well. So these two teams know each other very well. And, and the coaches know each other very well. So they know tendencies. There's not at this point when you've, you've seen a team, you know a team, there's not a whole lot that's going to change from the last time you saw him in a tournament uh, in the regular season to now. Clark actually played in the Bondurant tournament, but did not play. It did not match up that way as the first pitch to Anna Ekstrom, Annika, sorry, is a strike. Second on the way. Fouled off into the net behind home plate where one of our cameras is located. Hardworking crew here from Iowa Public Television, giving you all those great pictures. As you see Roger Rowland there, you see Libby Bemis there, nice tight close up, and there's the outfield camera. They're up on a lift out there in center. Not as windy as it was before when they were kind of getting shaken around. There's another one of the views from above the dugouts and behind home. Great job in the truck and uh, swing and a miss. Extum is struck out and there's one away. And then there's another ang ang camera angle. We're not done. There's the dugout. That's a look inside the Bondurant huddle. And we also have one in Clark. The little GoPro cameras can do a lot. 
get a chance to see what you can't quite get from the stands or other broadcasts. We're happy to put this all together. High fly ball lifted towards left, going over as the center fielder, Priest, to make the catch. And there's two away now in the second. Great communication out in the outfield. And you can see both Robbins and Kreese going after that ball. Kreese, the center fielder, communicates, talks, calls off Robbins. Robbins goes behind and backs her up. A little bit of a smile. It's always good to have a little bit of fun when you're playing. Bemis, the pitch, upstairs for a ball. As Sydney Carroll steps in, an eighth grader. She's the designated player. 243 is her average. The only eighth grader in the starting lineup. There's a freshman, Exton and Adkins and Peters, but Peters just plays the field in this lineup, but it's the seniors and juniors at the top of the lineup. There are six starters returning from last year's state championship team for the Blue Jays, and it's a called strike to cut it to two and one. You talk about Kinsey Peters and, and only being in the outfield and right field. That's a, a player that they needed to replace, a position they needed to replace from a year ago. And they were having some players come out. They're hitting balls to right field. And Coach Rowland said, hey, we just need somebody that can be out there that can maybe catch two out of three, two out of four. And nice. Kinsey Peters came out and he goes, who's that girl in black out there? She's catching a lot of things out there. Who's that girl in black? Found out who she was. Well, why didn't she go out last year? Didn't know why she didn't go out. She's on the team. He goes, all I call her is the girl in black. That's how I know her. <laughs> and the girl in black will, get a, will not get a chance to bat there. That is Sydney Carroll who gets a hit and puts a runner on with two out. The reason she didn't go out last year, she was taking driver's ed. Oh, that's right. That's right. He said that she was taking driver's ed, so she didn't go out. But came out this year, Flex for the and that's her nickname, the girl Black in black out in right field that can catch a lot of fly balls. And you need someone like that. Right field, you know, that's one of those, that's one of those positions that the ball's harder to catch than you realize because it's tailing away from you. It's like a Haley's Comet type thing that you would see, you know, comes in and then it cuts away from you when it's a right-handed batter. When it's a left-handed batter that would hit it to you, it's a lot more straight, like you'd be playing left field. But when you're in right, that ball is tailing away, and so when you think it's at you, chances are it's gonna be about three to four feet to your left. It does have different spin when it comes out that way to right field. Isla, Exton. Exton at the plate. Swung on and missed. She's playing second today. Asked for time. Doesn't have to be granted by the umpire. They asked for it anyway. There's a time limit called strike. The batter needs to get in there. The pitch near, pitcher needs to get in there. There's kind of a clock going on. We saw a couple times yesterday where a couple of players called for time and the umpire did not grant it. Swung on, hit back to Bemis. Throw over to first. And to Devin Carson is recorded. And the Blue Jays leave another run. Another runner on base. We've played one and a half. Three nothing. Clark. Don't miss a minute of today's exciting action. Iowa Public Television is streaming today's softball championships live. Visit IPTV.org to watch the stream. If you've got relatives out of state that want to watch it, there's where to do it. Out of the country. If you're watching online somewhere, send us a tweet at Iowa Public Television. Tell, you us, tell us where you're watching from today. Better yet, show us a picture. A few Great. of those selfies that we uh, have seen from the tournament here. We're two games away from a Laura Leonard selfie. <laughs> you, might, you might have to help me, not with the selfie, <laughs> but how to post it on a tweet. I oh. don't even know how to do that. All right, let's, let's, let's right Lindsay on, deal go. here. And... Uh, she had just a couple of words, just trying to get, you know, they want to keep the pedal down. Three nothing is, that's not a lead at all. You know, it really isn't, and especially between these two teams, they, they're both explosive. They both can score a lot of runs. So you got your three in the first inning. They're looking to get another three here in the second inning. Bycroft's first pitch is in there for a strike. Sydney Redmond, the freshman, 
playing second base, batting 333, two home runs and 13 RBIs on the season. Digs in from the right-hand side, bat over the shoulder, the pitch. Lifted in the air towards right. The girl in black makes a catch. Kinsey Peters, and there's one away here in the bottom of the second. See the driver's head paid off. <laughs> He's out there navigating around right field, able to haul that ball in. That's a great find, and that's, that's what Coach Roland said, is that we just have, we have a smaller community that we have to be able to find these, these young ladies that are willing to come out and play, and we've got to put them in positions. Some of them may be just position players. Some of them may just come in off the bench to pinch run or, or pinch hit. As we come up on 3 o'clock on Friday, July 25th, 2014. Hazy conditions here at Harlan Rogers Complex in Fort Dodge. We're on the north side of town, right next to the airport. And if you listen, you'll hear airplanes every once in a while. It's like we're playing at Shea Stadium in New York, the old Shea. <laughs> City Fields is right across the street, so you still hear the planes coming out of LaGuardia. The pitch on the way. Ripped for a base hit. Through the right side, past the diving, Kenzie Adkins. And on board is Allie Deutsch. Nice piece of hitting. They've gone to that left side a lot today. They've been able to get around on Bycroft. They've been able to find that gap, that 5-6 hole right there to left field. And that's where the majority of their hits have come from today. So their timing is perfect, and they're able to pull the ball. Lexi Carson digs in against... Bycroft, the pitch is low. Deutsch is the designated player. She bats for Mackenzie Otto. And Deutsch is at first. She's a sophomore. Carson, a senior, the catcher, is at the plate, the pitch. Another called strike from Jeff Tank. 3 nothing. your score here in the bottom of the second between Clark and Bondurant Farrar, the Lady Jays on the downside of this one. The pitch, fouled out of play. Lindsay Deal is back in Fort Dodge with a team. She used to coach in Fort Dodge at Iowa Central Community College. Was a player at Clark, played at Clark College in Dubuque. And then she came and uh, the job opened up at Iowa Central. And she actually recruited her assistant coaches that are on this squad. Stacy Ritchie, Brittany Martin, and Carrie Price, all three were recruited when Deal was at Iowa Central as it's another ball, two balls and two strikes. Well, it's, it's nice to have assistant coaches that are kind of in the same playbook as you are. You, you played for that coach and so you bring those players up as coaches and you're all on the same page, you all have the same thought process. Lifted towards center, reaching up and grabbing it out of the day air is Ashley Burrows and there's two away now in the second. And Deal remembers when she first met coach Roger Rowland of Bon Durant when she was a player. And they had a nice conversation even when she was a player. Yeah, he was coaching at Lincoln at the time, and uh, she was in high school, and that's where they first crossed paths. And I'll tell you what, listening to both of these coaches talk about one another, mutual respect on both sides. They, they really get along very well. They both respect each other's coaching abilities and their teams and their players. But slapped down the right side. That's going to be a base hit. Nice piece of hitting by Kennedy Kreese. Boy, she just flat out had a great at-bat right there. Let's again, take a look at this one again, Laura. Let's see how good that was. Lead-off hitter, and from that left side, look at how she just deadens the ball right there, gets a couple of steps running up in the batter's box, lays it down, and the defense playing back just a step slow, not getting out and jumping on that, on that bunt. Swung on a miss by Vanessa Bakley. Do you uh, call that a slap hit or do you call that more of a bunt there? That one I'd probably call more of a, a drag bunt. Um, I think her first at bat was probably a little bit more of a slap, a little punch hit. But that one's more of a drag where she's able to just deaden the ball and scoot down the first baseline. Get that barrel there. Stay on it all the way through it. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> a little conversation between... <laughs> 
coach and Bakley and and uh, the two of them just kind of pushed each other away. So <laughs> I'm sure something was said there that made each one of them laugh a little bit. The pitch. Just outside of the zone for a ball. One and one, two outs, two on here in the second. Deutsch got on with a single. She's at second. Kreese at first, the pitch. Fouled back, one and two. We'll have a little conversation with Brent Bloom here in just a moment. One ball, two strikes. First, there's some softball to be played, business to be had. Vanessa Bakley, sacrifice in the first inning. Her second at bat comes in the second. She swung on a miss, strike three, and that'll end the Indian half of the second inning. Leave two, we've played two, three nothing. Clark leads Bondurant Farrar. Let's go to Brent Bloom. Brent? Thank you, Paul, here with Nick Podaski. I got it right this time, of the Iowa Farm Bureau, and they have such a great partnership with the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Just speak to that and how important it is to invest in Iowa and in Iowa's future, really. Well, the Iowa Farm Bureau is uh, very proud to be the uh, uh, prime sponsor for the uh, Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union uh, because we rec recognize how valuable our, the youth are to the state of Iowa in our future. Um, athletics uh, gives, us, uh, gives kids the opportunity to learn a lot of character qualities such as uh, teamwork, leadership, a strong work ethic. These are values that, uh, that are important to our members and uh, we feel it's very important to try to promote those kind of values. Uh, we offer uh, millions of dollars worth of grants and programs to try to forward that goal. And what a beautiful way to illustrate it then a great setting and a, and a great tournament with the, the softball tournament here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we've got a perfect day for it. Uh, the, the kids are playing playing their hearts out, and uh, we're just very proud to be, be a part of it. Well, thank you, Nick, and thank you to Iowa Farm Bureau for the great support of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Yeah, we're very proud to be part of this and uh, uh, very proud of what the kids are doing uh, uh, to further their futures. Paul, Laura, back to you guys. Brent Bloom, thank you very much. We go to the top of the third. Clark leads Bondurant 3 0, and the pitch to Kenzie Atkins is a ball as we begin the third. Clark scored three runs in the first. Both teams shut out in the second. We play in the third. That one's a strike. One and one pitch. Kenzie Atkins, the other freshman in the lineup, in the batting lineup, that is. That pitch is a strike. These programs have one or two freshmen, sophomore, eighth graders in that lineup that will be the seniors when they're back again the next time. You know, these are our programs. Again, a little bit smaller towns that they do have to bring up the younger players. And I think both of these places have pretty that good little junior programs, Number youth programs that these young ladies get experience playing some tournament ball, some 14 and under teams. Uh, as a matter of fact, they coach deal coaches in her, in her off time, in her spare time. She coaches some 14 U teams and so, they just have their, they have the ability to bring up these younger players and just keep reloading their teams. Ashley Burroughs put down a bunt that was just inches away from being fair. She was already rounding first when that one went foul, so she'll do it again. From Bemis, Burroughs steps in, that one's in the dirt. And the lefty Burrow stands in that box. She'd like to slap it down again. Maybe another bunch. She bats at the 1-1 one, one pitch. Rip down the right field. Past the right field, and that's going to go all the way to the wall. Burrow's on her way to second. Digging for third. Head up. She's going to be in there with a stand-up triple here in the third inning to lead off the Lady J rally. That's the kind of spark that Bondurant needed. They got a big hit. Just turns on it. Adkins laces it into right field and then turns on the Jets. Picks up Coach Roland as she rounds second. He's waving her on to third and she gets there standing up. She makes it look effortless there. Coach Dial heads out.
we get a chance to listen in here. Take the first pitch, just take it, squeeze on the second pitch. Take the first pitch, squeeze on the, if she pops it up, watch it. A little bit of strategy there from Coach Rowland. All right. Go to one. Let's go. Right here. Come on. Look at her. Nothing past her. Let's go. And there's what Coach Dial had to say. You know, this is at a point in the ball game where if you are Coach Dial, you're saying, okay, we don't want to give up that three run lead. We don't want to give momentum back over to Bondaran Farrar. And on the other hand, Coach Roland planning strategy how are we going to get this first run pushed across? Runner at third. The pitch, a strike to Katie Norton, the senior. The 0-1. Squeezes on, the bunt goes down to third baseline, feel it in fair, fair territory, the run's gonna count. Nobody's covering second to throw, they get the shortstop there to make the play, and it's out at first, but the run counts. Coming up for Clark. Vanessa Backley. Let's take a look at this one. The bunt, I think if she lets that go on other foot, it's foul. Instead, there's nobody. Backley was sprinting to short. It was a foot race between Norton and Backley. Backley wins. Pitch is in there for a ball. Two and oh now. Emily Wilson at the plate. Top of the third, one run in for the Lady Jays. Another one in there, up high for a ball. Ripped foul by Emily Wilson. So Norton was credited with the single, was thrown out 5-6 at second on that last play. Burrow scores, and now Wilson bats with two outs. Lays off, draws the walk, and the Jays have another runner aboard, and they'll restart their rally. And I think Bondurant's hoping that that running mistake does not hurt them. It was a situation where that base was open just for a split second, but Bakley does a great job of getting over heads up play by her to get over and cover up second. Called strike. Annika Ekstrom. Actually is on deck. Keely Bycroft is at the plate now, the lefty. Switch hitting's a little more in vogue in softball, and you, they can teach yourself to play left. If you've got some wheels, a coach is probably gonna put you out there. A lot of times they, they will find, the coaches will find the, the players that can handle the bat, that can run up in the box and, and put the ball down or swing away, have, have a good eye, know what the defense is doing, and have a little bit of speed. They will turn you around and teach you how to hit from the left side. Bemis on the mound, in the circle. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Lifted in the air, down the right field line, trying to make a run for it. And extending the glove, but not coming up is Mackenzie Otto, and will reset. Good effort, and Otto was playing a little bit more, a few steps closer to balls, right center strikes. field, so she had a long run to try to get to that one. No reset on the 2-2. Swung on and missed. Bycroft's erased. On the strikeout. Two strikeouts on the inning for Bemis. But the Lady Jays score a run. Would you be so kind to take one out? Two hits, one air. And then one left. Play two and a half, three one. Let's see how these teams got here. East Marshall, the top seeded team. In 3A, went uh, advanced over Mid Prairie. Bondurant beat West Burlington, Notre Dame in the opening round, and then Bondurant Farrar advanced over East Marshall last night. Clark defeated Spirit Lake in the opener. Green County with the upset of Center Point Urbana, and then Clark took care of Green County last night. Uh, uh, that game finished at 12:22 this morning, and 
And uh, we talk about uh, Clark. They have a schedule that's uh, nothing to laugh at either. They play a lot of big teams. They played Dowling Catholic, who lost in the semis last night. Played Ankeny Centennial, also Ankeny, ADM. Eddiesville Blakesburg, who just lost in that uh, title game right before here. Southeast Polk, who's playing for a title tonight. Johnston, who's playing for a title tonight. Bondurant Farrar, they have played. It's a 5-3 win for Clark. Played Urbandale, Indianola, played Eddieville Blakesburg again and lost, or won that game. So, Clark has a pretty tough schedule, too. Well, a lot of these schools do, and we, we've talked about that, that a lot of these schools that you see here at the, the state tournament have scheduled difficult teams and have had a, a difficult tournament run to get here, and they like to play very good competition to try to season their team so when they do get into regional play, they are a little bit more experienced. Bemis, who will continue her career at Minnesota State Mankato next year. The pitch is a strike. And you talked about how Clark got here. That first round game, they won 13 to nothing over Spirit Lake. It was a three inning game. And it was a perfect game by Bemis as well. It's only the 13th time in state tournament history that a perfect game has been thrown. So three innings, faced the minimum number of batters, and they won 13 to nothing. The 3-1 is fouled away, and the count will move full. Sometimes those games are good. Sometimes those games are not so good. You want to keep your team sharp, but you all will also want to Give them some rest. Swung on and missed because, well, it's a little different here as the strikeouts recorded a Bemis to start the third. The quarterfinals for Class 3A were played on Monday, and then they didn't play again until last night, till 10.30. That's a long time off. That's probably their biggest break of the season. Yeah, it really is, probably since the beginning of the year when they started practice. You're, you're right, that's probably the, the longest amount of time that they've had off in between games in a long, long time. And then tur short turnaround time, getting done so late last night and then having to come back and, and play a game here in the mid-afternoon. So far, it hasn't affected either team. I think the adrenaline has kicked in, oh. and they had a little bit of extra time to, to sleep in and get rested up. Probably back at the park around 11. I think I saw their bus pull up just about 12.30 today for Bondurant. I didn't see when Clark came in. They warmed up on the fields uh, north of where we are at. Devin Carson, the one 2 is fouled back into the screen. 3-1 your score here in the third. We've awarded two championship trophies already. Akron Westfield in 1A, Earlham in 2A. 4A is after us, 5A yet to come tonight. Swung on a miss, strike three, and Carson is out on strikes. Now, Bycroft is, is doing a, a better job of locating the pitches and really starting to get command of the strike zone. That's the fourth strikeout for Bycroft. Ball is hit into center field, bounces right where the grass meets the dirt by Carly Robbins for a hit to get a runner aboard here with one out. In the third. Robins, the like that ball hung up just an, enough for Robbins to be able to get the Sarah end of the bat Andrew. on it, just enough behind it to get it over second base to the outfield. The pitch is a called strike as Sarah Andrew steps in. Andrew. Today is 0 for 1 with a strikeout on the season. 323 batting average. Steps in from the right. The, the pitch from the lefty. So we talk about Bycroft. She is batting from the left side when she was batting. She is a left-handed thrower. But you will see it from time to time that a girl who can throw right will bat left to take advantage of whatever skills. You haven't seen it much from Clark because they're just bruisers when it comes to hitting the ball. Yeah, and, and you just have to go, it, it changes every year for these coaches as these kids go through high school and graduate and you have different personnel year in and year out. And so you have to work with what the personnel is that you have for that year. And so 
If you have speed, you utilize that speed. If you have hitters that can smash the ball, then you, you try to play to that strength. And so it just, it's, uh, it's ever changing for these high school coaches and they have to adapt to what ball, kind of skill strike. level that they have on their team. And it's not like in college or the pros where you go and recruit a player for a position or a need or a way to fit your system. No, but I, I think with both of these programs, you have those lower level programs, which I think all, they obviously all filter into these high schools, but I think they all learn under the same system. And so you do have players that are on the same page with the coaches. Little flare is hit to Katie Norton, who picks it up, steps on the back, and retires the side. For Clark, they lead one. We played three. Three one your score. Here in Fort Dodge, as uh, Brent Bloom is going to be with us in just a moment as he talks with head coach Deal from Clark, and he's ready to go. Brent? Coach, your team on the stage last year, but this year a little bit different so far. How do you think they've handled the big stage? You know, I think I keep saying all along the, down the stretch that the only way you can experience the experience is to experience it. And last year being in this game and realizing that this is just another game, um, you know, like that we've played all season and the schedule that we've played has prepared us for this moment. Um, you know, I've been talking about July 25th uh, at 2.30 for a long time for these guys. And so, um, you know, we expected to be here and I think that my kids are nice and relaxed. So. Your offense has a reputation of being big bombers, but you manufactured three runs in that first I inning. I'm not really, uh, I mean, if you look at me, you wouldn't think that I'm somebody that was a bunner myself back when I played. And so that has never been my mentality, um, you know, but we've made some adjustments. And when you get down and, and you play tough teams, you're going to have to do those kind of things and, and do something maybe different that's out of your regular game plan. Last thing, how much you trust uh, Libby Bemis in the circle right now? I trust her. I mean, she just has been so cool and calm. So I better get over there so I can make Thanks, sure. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. it. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to talk there, Coach Dial. Appreciate that. You know, that goes back to exactly what she said as one of the keys, the big game perspective. Don't make too much out of this game. Don't make it bigger than what it is. You have prepared for this moment the entire season, and now you have your opportunity. So don't get all wound up in just this moment. It's an entire season that's coming to the, the head here in the state tournament title game. Focus on the process is what she told us, and that's exactly what you're talking about there is the first pitch is a strike to Annika Exton. Over one today, 268 on the season, three homers. Next pitch goes through the glove and to the screen, even the count at one and one. You know, and, and Coach Dial also talked about their was the fact that, you know what, we're bombers. We like to knock the ball around the park, but we had to take what they were giving us in that inning where we scored the three runs. We manufactured it, took advantage of their mistakes, and that's what you have to do in a game like this. It's a big stage that they were on last year. We talked about the, the rematch of last year's three. That one is ripped, and Bondurant, by the way, can also hit some home runs. They had two last night in the semifinal win over East Marshall. That one was last night. Their game finished at 11.48. The next pitch is a called third strike. It's dropped. Down to first. To complete it is Lexi Carson to Devin Carson. And there's one away here in the Blue Jay half of the fourth. As we move along in this ball game, you know, Bondurant was able to scratch cross one run in that last inning, they're gonna need to start looking for ways to manufacture some runs. And and then that goes back to one of the keys that Coach Rowland said, find a way to win. They're gonna have to dig down deep and try to find a way to get back in this ball game. Swung on a miss to coming right into your living room here behind home. And it'll be nothing and two to Aaron Hanley. Bemis. She's one of six seniors on this squad. The pitch. Fouled out of play. We'll do it again. Six seniors who played a tough schedule. And as uh, Coach said, had July 25th at 2.30. It's 
something they talked about for a long time. Yeah, part, that, of that, part of that mental game. Yeah, and, and that's, you know what, that's a nice goal to have, and that's a great way to start the season, just putting that up in the locker room, in the dugout, or whatever it might be, July 25th, 2.30, and that's your goal to focus on for the entire year, and, and that's what this team has done. Reached out and just out of the reach of the first baseman, and here's the thing, though, they almost didn't get here. Um, <laughs> they had to get a walk-off hit from Vanessa Bakley, or Backley, she had a walk-off hit in the regional finals. They were down to their last strike in that contest, so they almost didn't even make it here to get a chance to play on, at 7.25 at 2.30 in the afternoon. Popped up behind in foul territory. Third baseman. Sarah Andrew makes the play. And there's two away. A little smile between Andrew and Carson, the catcher, both of them going after it. And you could see Andrew a little tentative going after it, reaches out and is able to glove it, but was not sure if Carson was coming out from behind home plate to go after that. We talked about Bemis's pitches. What did she, what, <laughs> without completely breaking them down, I mean, what is, tell me what she's throwing. I mean, you're trying to keep a, pit, a batter off balance. What's she throwing? Well, right there, that was that was an off-speed, and it looked like it had a little bit of a drop to it as well. And that is her off-speed pitch when she goes to that drop ball. But she will throw a screwball and a curveball that move in to a hitter, out away from a hitter. And she has great command of that rise ball right there that she throws. And, and so she's got a variety. And Coach Dow said, you know what? A lot of people will go, yeah, I have all these pitches. I can throw them all. But can you throw them very well? And she said that, that Bemis can throw all those pitches very, very well. She's very impressed with what her pitcher can do. <laughs> it's like an actor saying, can you play this part? Yeah, 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 yeah. Never, <laughs> never done that part before, and they sell it. Pitch is in there for a strike. Counts full at three and two with two outs here in the fourth. I don't think she needs to sell it, though. She's got all the goods. <laughs> she certainly does, and tell you what, Minnesota State is gonna get a, a very good pitcher. And they get another strikeout. Venus strikes out two of three. Five strikeouts for Bemis, but Bondurant, tell you what, Bycroft's not having a bad game either. A lot of strikeouts in this contest. As you see Keeley Bycroft, the strikeout there, another one. And what type of pitch is she throwing there, Laura? Well, you know, you notice that's more location. Every one of those strikeout pitches was on the outside of the plate. One was high, one was right down the middle, one was about knee level. And so they're certainly working the outside of the plate when they want to go and get that strikeout. And so location, 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 and that's what they're doing very well. Keely Bycroft with four strikeouts, Libby Bemis with four strikeouts. So location, so I might not have as many pitches, but I'm gonna go in, go out, go up, go down, keep you off balance that way, as opposed to throwing off your timing, I'm throwing off your location. Yeah, and, and pitchers that maybe don't have as many pitches and maybe don't have as much velocity on their pitches, they have to be able to maybe outsmart the hitter and work the ball in different spots and work with their catcher on how are they going to approach a hitter. If this is a hitter that maybe can likes to pull the ball or maybe likes to go to right field. How are you going to approach that hitter and where are you going to throw them? Are you going to throw them high in the zone, low in the zone? Are you going to jam them? Are you going to go outside and make sure that they don't have that plate coverage where they wave right through it? As the first pitch comes in for a ball to Sydney Redmond. As the sun starts to make its way through the clouds, you can feel the humidity starting to uh, tick up just a little bit. And the breeze still just keeps slowing down. <laughs> as intense as it was when we started at 10 a.m., it's a welcome relief. I just don't want to see that breeze go away if we're going to keep getting this humid. <laughs> no, we, we could keep maybe a little, what, 10 mile an hour, 12 mile an hour breeze. That would be okay. Liner up the middle just past the reach of Bycroft, and it's going to be a single for Sydney Redmond to lead off the Clark half of the fourth. That's a shot right back up the middle, and Bycroft could not get the glove across to glove it. Just ticked off the top of her glove, but it shoots out into center field. Burrows there 
grabs it, gets it back into the infield. And now you can see she shade, Burrow shades her eyes there. You can see that sun starting to creep back into this contest and make its presence felt. First pitch is in there for a strike to Allie Deutsch. And, but these players have had all sorts of conditions, and that's one thing that Coach Dial talked about last night. They love to play in the rain. They were genuinely excited when the skies opened up last night. I think they were the only ones that were excited when the skies opened up. Because, but you know what? Sometimes you get a situation, you get conditions that a team feels comfortable with. And apparently this Clark team likes to have it a little bit wet, a little bit muddy. And they like to have some raindrops coming down on them, and that's when they play their best ball. And so she said that, yes, we were ecstatic that it started raining, and, and we like it like that. We play our, our best softball, and uh, for whatever reason, maybe they're mudders. They like, they like to get out in the mud. Foul ball ripped down the line as they chase the foul ball back into play. There's a joke there, but I'm going to refrain from using it right there. The pitch. Close to her head of Deutsch. She ducks out of the way. A ball and a strike now. Runner at first is Sydney Redmond. Redmond with a nice shot up the middle. And the Lady Indians would like to get another one. The pitch from Bycroft is upstairs for another ball. Two and two. One, four, and two for the Blue Jays from Bondurant Farrar. Three, seven, and one for Clark. They lead, and they're at the bat. Another ball. Clark in Osceola, south of Des Moines on I-35. And then Bondurant Farrar, it's say 15 minutes from downtown Des Moines to the north and east. A lot of changes in the athletic program there. Ball four issued to Ali Deutsch with the walk. There was a family in town that won the lottery, and so did the community as the family will build a new football stadium, do some renovations around town, and everybody's gonna benefit yeah, there. And that's one six, thing that Coach one Roland talked six. about with his squad is he really liked the, uh, the, the ladies that he has, the character of this team. He says if these players are indicative of what's out there right now, society is gonna be just fine as we see a courtesy runner come in. That is Mackenzie Otto. What great rapport she has with her players as you listen to Dial there and she just says, I love you. Take a big deep breath. Says that to, she's actually pinch hitting here with Amanda Kindred. The sophomore gets a chance to bat here in a 3-1 contest. She pinch hits for Lexi Carson here. You know, sometimes coaches just kind of get a gut feeling and they go with that gut feeling and, and make those changes and make, so, make those substitutions. And she's banking on the fact that this substitution in Kindred is gonna pay off for her. The courtesy runner at first is Mackenzie Otto. Is that right? Yeah. Who's also the right fielder. And that nope. ball goes out of play. And, and Kindred, you know, has had some plate appearances, so it's not like she's coming off the bench and, and never seen the, the diamond at all. She's got 65 coming into the, the tournament, 65 plate appearances, hitting close to 300. So she has, has the ability to get the ball to the outfield and maybe push across another insurance run. Kindred, the pitch. Two and two with that ball pitch. Big spot to come in, step in off the bench. You, you say cold for the fact that you haven't swung the bat yet in this ball game, but you know the situation. As you say, coach has a feeling. Two on, no out. Popped up right side and it is gonna get out of play. Sometimes you just have to play those hunches as a coach. If it, if it pops in your mind and you think it's a good fit for that situation, you have to pull the trigger on it and, and make that substitution. Kindred, 
Slaps it into the middle of the infield. They do not get the lead runner. Here comes a run to score. Play at the plate, drop safe is gonna be Redman. Down to third goes Otto. And Kindred is at first on a very nice fielding play, but after that, it didn't quite go the Blue Jays' way. Let's take another look here. You see the ball hit at short to Wilson, and she tried to shovel it to Exton. She got it, just couldn't quite keep it in the glove. Call is safe, and then the run comes home to score. That's Redman, and that makes it 4-1. And we have another change out here coming in to run for Kindred is going to be Sydney Marker. And there at third is Otto. That's Mackenzie Otto. And that is Sydney Marker. Well, they just created a little bit of chaos. And you're right, Wilson made a great play keeping that ball in the infield. And I think when Extam came across, I think she was looking to either maybe pull the ball out of the glove to see if she could look to first to turn it or make sure she had an eye on the runner in Redmond over there at third so she wouldn't go home. And then she just took her eye off the ball. It popped out of her glove and the run scores. The bun is gonna be foul from Crease, the senior playing center field today. And she'll fall behind 0-2. Runners at the corner, no out. Clark trying to get a little distance here from Bondurant Farrar. The pitch from Bycroft. Going for that slap hit and striking out is Kennedy Kreese. That'll be the inning's first out and the number two hitter in the lineup. Number seven, Vanessa Bakley. Bakley comes in. And there'll be a little meeting at the circle here. As Roger Rowland makes the way out. My gut's telling me to squeeze right here. They know it's coming. I know. We're gonna hit away. What do you, how do you feel about her going into first and third? Let her have the option to swing first pitch and then she doesn't hit it, squeeze her. Okay. So be, that's exactly what I did to Kennedy, right? Her first pitch. Okay. Let's, uh, you be paying attention. If they throw a throw down here, you're going to get to two, okay? But right now, we're not going to go anywhere, okay? Lindsay Dial talking up the strategy, drawing it up in the chalk. And coaches, I'm just always impressed in how they can remember first pitch every batter. They can play that game back in their mind. She knows what happened to Kennedy on the first pitch, and now they're going to see what they do to Vanessa. See if it plays out the way it's drawn up, the pitch. Popped up right side. That's going to trouble. Spot's going to drop. Run's going to score. They're waving the runner to third, and that's Martyr. And standing at second is Bakley. Bakley drives in a run to make it five to one. Well, that ball fell into no man's land. Pops it up to the right side. It falls in, and Peters out in right, playing deep. It finds the ground and the green out in right field and then scoots away from Peters. That allows Marker to go from first to third. And they talked a little bit about that in the huddle. Can she go first to third on a, on a base hit? And she certainly did. And that'll bring in Libby Bemis. Can she help her cause? Bemis today, one for two, a hit and a strikeout. She's ahead in the count at this at bat. Now two and oh, the pitch up high. Five one. Clark scored two here in the fourth. Three in the first. And they're gonna walk her. Send send your number three hitter to pitch to your number four hitter. Bemis goes to first. Devin Carson comes in, and Carson has two RBIs and is one for two as well. Big spot in the ball game, and they Wanted to load them up. Now you have the force at any base. Infield drawn in. You have to come home with the ground ball and see if you can turn the double play. Popped up. Lifted deep to center. That's going to be deep enough to likely score a run. 
The run will score. The throw comes to third. Marker scores, but none of the other runners can move up. But getting the job done is Devin Carson on the sacrifice fly to center. And the catch made by Burroughs, and she threw it to third. That's good. That's good play right there. That's a smart play right there. She was so deep with that ball and backing up. When she caught it, she knew exactly she was going to go to third base to see if she could catch the base runners sleeping, but uh, they stayed in place. They, they read the defense and knew that they needed to stay close to second and first and were not going to advance, but that was a smart defensive play by Burroughs. China Beidler is going to come in and run for Libby Bemis, the courtesy runner. China Beidler. So Robbins will come in, and now Coach Rowland is uh, just asking for a little clarification out there behind first base. Having a conversation with uh, Tony Sauer, the first base umpire. Behind home today is Jeff Tank. Shannon McWhorter down at third. And you watch the umpire there tap his left arm. He there, the ump just like coaches, umpires are talking to each other as well on where the play's at. Off-speed pitch, changeup comes in for a strike. Almost a floater. Started off with the off-speed, and she's been coming after these hitters, and they're starting to tee off on her, so she had to throw them something a little bit different to keep them guessing. Pitch is in there for a ball, coming up at the bottom of this inning. Well, here from Roger Rowland. Brent Bloom will have that conversation for us. And if he only does one question, it could go up until tomorrow if we let it. Coach Rowland, I think we could just have on the air and he'd just talk for quite a while. <laughs> very relaxed individual, very fortunate, feels blessed to be here. He says some coaches never make it to the state tournament and here he's won it three times. Swung on and missed and it's a strikeout of Robbins. But the Indians, the Lady Indians, push three more across the plate to take a 6-1 lead here in the fourth. It's going to be a lot of, uh, you got to start pecking away now as you go into the top of the fifth. You're trailing five. You know you got some big hitters, but it's just a matter of one at a time, right? Yeah, and this is where you have to start manufacturing some runs if you can. First of all, you need to get base runners, and, and you have to do it any way that you can. If it's by a walk, if it's leaning in, getting hit by a pitch, whatever it is, you have to have some discipline at the plate, but you definitely need to get start getting base runners because you're running out of outs. And you're running out of, yep, you're running out of time here. 6-1, you trail. Let's go to Brent Bloom. Roger, your team has battled back all season long. How do you get back into this one? Uh, we have the heart of a champion. A uh, seven-inning game. It's not a four-inning game. So, obviously, we're struggling. I knew we had to play good defense, and we're not. But uh, we're going to keep battling to the end, and if they beat us, we'll just tip our hats and say, great job. Offensively, you do have the firepower. Just need a couple swings to go your way. Is that the case? Yeah, we've had some big innings here at State, so we're just hoping and praying maybe we've got one more left. Right. Thank you, Coach. Coach Roger Rowland with our Brent Bloom. Bloomy, nice job. Good to see you working. He's been chasing down stories. We got one more for you here. We'll get to as this uh, at the bottom of the inning. 6-1. The Lady Jays send their 8-9, and then they'll be back to the top of the order with Isla Extum. Swings or uh, watches that ball go by for a ball. 149 hitter on the season, the pitch. Hit towards short, short hop, up and fielded. Bakley to Carson, and there's one away. Bakley comes in hard, charges at it, short hops her, but she has the great hands to be able to glove that, make the strong throw to get that first out, but that was a great play by Bakley at shortstop. Little floater out there, one hop, gets on her quickly, and a good strong throw. Coming into bat now is Kenzie Atkins, and she's going to get a hit. That's going to go. She's going to go shopping at the gap. That's going to be a double, stand-up double, with one out here in the fifth. 
Kenzie Atkins. Nice piece of hitting. Well, that could be the start of the big inning that Coach Roland talked about. Uh, good job of going down and getting that ball and driving it into the gap. Didn't ever hesitate around first base. Gets down to second base, took, takes a look to see if that ball was going to scoot away and see if she could sneak out of another base, and she's going to right now. Pitch gets away from Carson, from Bemis. And Atkins goes to third. So Burroughs had a triple, her last at bat. Lifts it in the air, deep to right, back. Off the wall, that's gonna be extra bases. That's gonna be another triple. Back to back triples for Ashley Burroughs. Scores another run. Kenzie Atkins touches the plate to cut the lead to six to two. Burroughs gets a great pitch and gets it up into the wind, and she never stopped running. She didn't look at it at all, didn't think it was out, and she motors around to third base and drives in their second run of the ball game and gives them a little bit of momentum. Kenzie Atkins scores for the Jays, and the uh, Roger Rowland has that same look on his face, not too excited, not too down. Keep the team even. Swung on and missed, Katie Norton. Had a hit the last time. She's one for two. Single in an RBI, 273 on the season. Playing first today. The pitch from Bemis. Just, strike. just would like to get either something to the right field. You don't want to give up outs right now, but if she can get something to the right side of the field, that would definitely score the run or get something up in the air so she could get the sacrifice fly and get the run in. She's gonna bunt it. Play goes 1-3, one, 1-4 one, that is. Bemis to the covering second baseman, Sydney Redmond, but it gets the run home. Sack fly, sack bunt, works the same. Norton gets the job done, and now it's a 6-3 ball game. So now you creep a little bit closer and still looking to try to get a few more runs, but that's exactly what you wanted to do in this inning. Just peck away at that lead, try to keep the opponent in check, and then get your next turn at bat. You're down to seven outs. First pitch uh, to Emily Wilson is a ball. And the second pitch is a ball. Top of the fifth, 6-3, Clark leads Bondurant Ferrar. This is the Class 3 championship, Class 3A. Ball lifted to the right and out of play, right behind the camera that's on the first base dugout. You start to see the Lady Jays on the, they're on the rack, I guess, as you like to call it. They're on the fence, they're cheering on. A Little more pep in their step now. Bemis hasn't been overpowering. They're getting hits and they get another one right there from Emily Wilson. Well, we talked about Emily Wilson at the beginning of the ball game. She was on the all-tournament team a year ago. She's an all-district performer this year. Again, having a really solid state tournament and shoots that one through the right side to keep the inning alive. So Wilson stands at first and Kelly Bycroft, the pitcher. She's 0 for 2 today. Slaps this one back up the middle. Tough play, goes to second. Safe at second, safe at first. Now you can see the momentum going back to Bondurant and now the hitting is getting contagious. Bycroft gets on base, they're gonna call it a fielder's choice. It doesn't matter what the choice is as long as you have some runners. It's conversation time. The Jays fans come to their feet. The Indian fans start to clap their hands. So relax. I like, hey, I like to see you dive for that. I just came out here last time and said I need to see 110. I don't know, I can't do anything about that. Okay? Hey, this girl, the last two times you've got her on a K, right? Okay? So let's just go right at her here. If you need, you have a force here at third base. Nice and relaxed. Have each other's backs right here. Lindsay Dial has the conversation. 
They're looking at their talking strategy and uh, just tell them to relax as the pressure's on Bondurant. And that's still the case. You're down six, you're still up six three if you're Clark. You're, you're in the catbird seat. You got a player at the play who you've struck out twice in Annika Ekstum, the pitch. Ground ball hit back to the pitcher Bemis. They're gonna say it went off her foot for a foul ball. Yeah, and she was trying to walk that one off. It came right down off the top of her foot, but uh, you heard Coach Dial say, you've got her last time, last couple of times with strikeouts, so let's go right after, and that's what the strategy is, is they're certainly gonna go right after this hitter. Swung on and missed. Throw down to third is gonna be too late, and a stolen base for Emily Wilson. I think defense just kind of forgot about her, and she just snuck over from second to third, and. Nobody back to cover. However, Bycroft did not move up. She's still at first. So runners now at the corners. The pitch is hit hard, but foul and out of play. 6-3. Annika Ekstam. We've got Bycroft over there at first, and, and you've got Wilson at third. So I don't. Do you send that runner? I don't think they would make a play on her, even though there is two outs. Pitch goes outside. They're going to do the first and third dance, and now Kitty Bycroft will be at second with the stolen base, trying to draw a thrower at least some attention. But the Lady Indians did not bite. Extam digs in. One, two. The pitch high goes over the screen. Here comes the run to score, safe at the plate. Wilson scores, Bycroft to third, and it's a 6-4 ball game. Bemis just overthrew that. I think got a little anxious, was trying to get the big strikeout. That one got away from her, got over the head of Carson, and in comes Wilson to plate that fourth run for Bondurant. Lady Jays are feeling the momentum on their side. Bemis just has to slow it down. 2-2, still looking to bunt. Swung on, that's gonna be another foul ball. And she's staying alive up there. Swinging at and fouling off pitches that she really doesn't like, but knows they're in the zone, has to do something with them, and is looking to try to find a pitch that she can put in play and maybe get that another, another run across. Another ball in the dirt, stopped by Lexi Carson. And it's a 3-2 count. Carson has a big job. You have to get down and smother that ball. You don't want another ball to go to the backstop. That run would make it a one-run game. Ground ball hit at the second baseman. Up within and over is Redmond to Carson. And the inning is over, but not before the Lady Jays get three to cut this lead. Six to four. And the Lady Indians are gonna say, pressure's still on them, 6-4 is our score. Paul Yeager here alongside Laura Leonard, and this one has it got away quickly, but now all of a sudden, we got ourselves a great ball game. Well, you heard Coach Roland say, we've had big innings here at the state tournament, and so they got themselves a big inning there and got some momentum back, and that's exactly what they needed. And so they would like to have a one, two, three inning right here because their bats are hot right now and they wanna get back up to hit. So if you are the Lady Indians, do you try to slow it down and uh, stretch that game out a little bit? Yeah, you know, that could be the strategy. Now you have to understand your hitters and who they are at the plate. You don't want to take them out of their rhythm if you do that. They have some bombers, and some of them like to swing at that first pitch, and so maybe not. So you have to figure out who's at the plate for you and maybe have them take a few pitches to slow it down just a bit. Clark scored three in the first and three in the fourth. The Lady J scored once in the third and three times in that top of the fifth. It's a 6-4 contest, 4-7-4 four, four for Bondurant, 6-8-1 for Clark. As we go to the bottom of the fifth here at Harlan and Hazel Rogers Sports Complex in Fort Dodge, Iowa, Paul Yeager alongside Laura Leonard. Brent Bloom is here and the entire Iowa Public Television production crew. Thank you for letting us be part of your Friday afternoon. We still have two more to play after this one, and this one's far from over. 4A will be next, a great matchup between Solon and Dallas Center Grimes, and then the nightcap, Laura and I will be back as Southeast Polk and Johnston. So Eric Braley and Molly Parrott will have that 4A game for you when we're done here. 
But right now, we are locked in a good one. They're uh, starting to fill up a little bit more as the bigger schools start to bring in a few more fans. And this is a close team in Bondurant. A lot of people here. Popped up. Left side's gonna make its way into the outfield and it's gonna be hauled in by Ashley Burroughs. One away here in the fifth. Well, a year ago, these two teams met for the championship and, and uh, Bondurant won in that ball game six to three. Now they led into the fourth inning three to two, but then they scored three runs in the top of the seventh to extend that lead. They ended up winning six to three, but that was a game where it was fairly close. It was, it was never back and forth. Clark never had the lead in that ball game, but Bondurant had that big inning late, which gave them some insurance runs and got them their, their state title. Fouled off on the right side, Sydney Redmond. Sarah Andrew flew out on that last at bat. Allie Deutsch on deck. Redmond, one for two today. With a hit and a run scored. Also flied out back in the second. Digs in against Bycroft. The pitch, fouled off, right side, out of play. You can see the fans there in the outside. They bring their lawn chairs. They're uh, sitting in those uh, stands. They're watching on the other diamond. The consolation game looks like it's over there. They're watching this championship in class three. Popped up right sides, drifting towards the outfield. Ball gets away from the right fielder. As Peters just couldn't quite squeeze it. And that'll be the fifth error of the game. I know that was a tough one. You can see that she's got the sunglasses on and the sun is a factor now in this ball game. So it was a tough play. And I think Extam was going out on the pop-up and Peters was coming in on it. Might've gotten a little bit distracted as she was going after that ball. Coming to bat is Allie Deutsch. She'll face Bycroft. Coming to the on-deck circle is Lexi Carson. Off speed, in there for a strike. Deutsch had a hit and a walk. Scored a run back in the fourth. Part of that three-run fourth for the Lady Indians. Digs in, the 0-1. One, the one. Upstairs, ball goes down to first for a throwback. Not in time. She's hot in the tournament, four for five over the course of the tournament and one home run. So doing a great job hitting her stride here up in Fort Dodge. And batting 419, pops it up again and out of play. We'll fall behind one and two. She also has four RBIs here in the tournament. So done when runners are in scoring position, she's been able to knock them in. Redmond's at first. Pitches upstairs for a ball to Deutsch. Bycroft wears that face mask as most pitchers do. All of the infielders for the Lady Jays wearing the face masks as well. Not required. We're worn for protection. Some of those shots, the girls can really get around on pitches now and no matter how quick you, your reflexes are, sometimes it's, you're not gonna get it. Oh, we definitely saw the need for the helmets and the face masks when you're in the batter's box. We saw one young lady last night get beaned, really did get beaned in the helmet and knocked her off her feet and, and she was perfectly fine. Rung her bell a little bit, but she went right down to first base. And if you think about back in the day when they didn't wear helmets. Popped up behind the plate. Oh! Annika Ekstrom gave all her effort there to try to get that one right in front of us. What a great effort. And that ball was moving away from yes. her as well. And she was right up against the fence, had it in her glove, just could not pull it in. And that's catching a ball behind home or any foul ball is very, very tough. That ball has a different spin than when it goes into the field. The pitch is swung on and missed, strike out. Ali Deutsch goes down swinging. Second out of the inning. And they're gonna bring in Lexi Carson to bat. That's a big strikeout for Bycroft and uh, 
You know, they have a runner on. They don't want to let her get any further than first base right now. Swung on and lifted on the right side of the infield. The second baseman, Exton going back to make the catch. The Indians don't score. They leave one. We played five great innings of softball here in Fort Dodge, and it's been some pretty exciting play so far in this contest. As we take a look at some of the first five inning highlights back in the first, it was a bunt. Bycroft just couldn't quite get it back to home, and the Indians scored twice. And then in the third, Bondurant came back looking to push a run across, and they do on the squeeze. Then there's a ball that goes into right field and Clark scores three times in that fourth inning. They did it on big hits, singles, and a walk and another single. And then Von Durant comes back with a triple. That's two triples. And then they had a bunt. Emily Wilson pushes one across. And then the one goes over the screen, the pitch. And the other run scores. Wilson scored on that pitch. And that's how we get to this point. 6-4 is your score as we go to the top of the sixth. The Lady Jays have six outs to score three runs to win it. The Clark Lady Indians have six outs to win it. Leading by two. Well now if you're Bondurant, it becomes a, a two inning game. You have six outs, you have to figure out a way to score at least two and keep your opponent in check. And Clark, on the other hand, knows they have six outs to get. Ball hit down the third baseline. It's a fair ball. It's going to rattle around in the corner. Heading for second. Here's the throw. Save! Aaron Hanley, the sophomore, says we're not going anywhere. Take a look at this one. Ripped right down the third baseline, just over the chalk. Hanley running the whole way. Touches the inside of the bag. The throw just a second too late. And the Lady Jays have their leadoff runner aboard. The pitch to Sydney Carroll is a ball. We saw a lot of hard hits by Clark early on. Starting to see a few more hard hits for Bondurant Farrar. Here's the game goes on, Laura. Well, and you already have your runner in scoring position, so no need to give up and out to move her to third base. You have to rely on your hitters right now to see if they can manufacture that run and produce that run by swinging away. Change up is hit down the third baseline, and it's going to be foul just out of the reach of Sarah Andrew. And Andrew really had no chance on that last hit. She was off the line about three feet, four feet maybe. And it just kind of landed right behind her. Sydney Carroll at the plate. Sees an RBI out there. Swung on and missed at that high pitch that looks oh so good in the eyes, but she can never catch up to it. One away to bring in Isla Exton. And that's the kind of pitch that you have to throw when you need to get a strikeout. That ball that just rises. It looks good when it's coming at you, and then it just tails up. Challenges her with the fastball right away. Gets ahead 0-1. 0 for 2 and 2 ground outs for Exton. Runner at second is Handley. Pitch is high. 1-1. One and one. Bondurant, a 9-4 quarterfinal win over West Burlington Notre Dame and an 8-4 win last night over East Marshall. One, two, foul. It's a good pitch by Bemis and going away from the right-handed hitter and Extem did a great job of getting that plate coverage, getting the bat out so she could spoil that pitch and see another one. Popped up out of play behind us. Sun is out, humidity is here. This is good old fashioned Iowa heat right here. That's how it's supposed to be in Fort Dodge for the state tournament. That's right. <laughs> Ball is bounced to the plate. Runners playing, or the fielders playing pretty much straight up. 
Looks like Crease is shaded just a little bit to the left side of second base. Ground ball goes up to middle. Bemis looks the runner back at third. Throws across to first to Carson. But Hanley gets to third. Hanley hesitated a little bit as Bemis took a look at her. She got kind of hung up between second and third and then Bemis went ahead and got the out. It's a tough play. You'd have to make the tag between second and third. And that'll bring in Kenzie Atkins. Atkins had that double. She puts a cue ball on it right behind second, but it's gonna be caught by Sydney Redmond to end the threat. The Jays leave a runner. Six four as we go to the bottom of the sixth. We need a huddle. Here goes. Let's take a listen in to the Clark okay. Lady Indians. Relax, okay? Let's continue to make adjustments at the plate. Okay, and let's push some runs across right now. You guys are some of the best hitters in the state of Iowa. I was talking over there to the, uh, you know, it's normal to just talk to television people on the game day, uh, but I was talking to them and they said, you guys are feared by so many and you are. So walk up there with that confidence, right? But still focusing on the process and one pitch at a time. Let's go right now. Come on, extend the swing. Here comes the huddle. The Indians looking to get a couple more runs here. Enjoy all that Iowa State Fair that it has to offer with Iowa Public Television. Watch Fair Highlights August 11th through 16th at 9 p.m. See Clifford the Big Red Dog at the IPTV booth. Join us for IPTV Day at the Fair on the 13th and the Governor Debate on the 14th and Market to Market on the 15th. That's all at the Iowa State Fair. We're at the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Championship Class 3A here in Fort Dodge, the Lady Jays of Bondurant Farrar in the blue, they are on the field. The pitch is from Keeley Bycroft. Her team trails 6-4. The count is even at one ball and one strike to Kennedy Crease. Slap hit, comes down the first base side, and it hit her down the line, and that's exactly what he, the umpire at home, Jeff Tank called that the entire way. Let's see what, let's get an explanation. Straight line. That's what I saw, I'm sorry. That's what I saw. Can we ask, can we ask, can I ask, have you asked him if he saw whether or not she kicked it or not? Can you do that for me? I could, but we can't really reverse it out though. That's the thing. So what happened is it was that slap hit or the drag bunt. It was more of a drag bunt on that situation. Right. And Crease hit the ball. She touched the ball out of the batter's box, which makes her out. If she's hit with the ball in the batter's box, it's a foul ball. But since she's out of the batter's box, she's out. And, and she was, and that was a close play too. I mean, she was already one step down the line. Again, we've seen her do such a great job right there. It just hits her on the foot and in the field of play. And Kreese, who's going to play her softball next year at DMAC, as a good handler of the bat, but that time just could not get out of the way. Pitch is lifted to right and to Kenzie Peters, and the out is made. And there's two away here in the Lady Indian half of the sixth. And that'll bring in Libby Bemis, the pitcher. 396 has moved her average up to 398. She's one for two today, six home runs, 28 RBIs. And is even now one ball and one strike with two outs here in the bottom half of the sixth. 6-4, six, Jays trail. Indians looking to get one across, ball bounced home by Bycroft. She's gonna go to Buena Vista in Storm Lake next year to play softball. Bycroft. The pitch. A little low. Three and one. A lot of these young ladies going on to further their career 
get a good college education. And, and a lot of these schools are getting really good quality athletes to join their programs. Foul ball into the screen behind home and we'll push the count full. Three and two. We know we have a game coming up. We also know we have some fans in the stands that are hoping that it's them in a few years that are playing on this field. Ball's hit deep to left center, or towards right center. It's gonna be off the wall. In, oh wow, what a play. Ashley Burroughs holds Bemis to a single. That ball was a shot off the fence. And Bemis is standing at first on the quick return of the hit ball by Burroughs. Burroughs got a great jump out there into right center field, played it perfectly off of the fence and hurried the throw back into second base to hold Bemis to a long single. And Burroughs is another one of those players that's gonna go on and play college ball. She's gonna go to Luther. Swung on and lifted foul, but in play and the catch is made in foul territory by Katie Norton. And the Lady Jays are down to their final three outs. But we are far from final in our softball coverage here on Iowa Public Television. We've had two games so far. We're in game number three. Game number four is coming your way. After this one, 4A, that should be a doozy of a ball game. Between Solon and Dallas Center Grimes. Great pitcher in Paige Lowry, arguably the best pitcher in the tournament. And Solon, the Lady Spartans, one of the best hitting teams in the tournament. I it's love a, that. It's, it's going to be a great matchup. It's going to be a fun one to watch. The We Believe chant from the fans, feeling it on both sides. The Lady Jays know they are down to their final three outs. Top of the lineup up, it looks like, for Bondurant. Burroughs, Norton, and Wilson. Ashley Burroughs has back-to-back -back triples, has scored the last two runs. Norton is one for two, one for three, and Wilson is two for two. So you have a lot of hitters coming up right here for the Lady Jays. If you're a fan of the Bondurant for our Lady Jays, we're feeling good about this. But you need two runs to tie. And the Lady Indians need three outs to lift the trophy. First pitch strike to Ashley Burroughs. Burroughs looks very calm up there in the box. I know there's probably a lot of nerves, but you just want to try to remain focused and, and stay relaxed. Venus. In the dirt for a ball. Coach Dial, I asked her if she liked the movie Hoosiers because she indicates she made it sound like she did every move from that movie with her team, talking about the mental side of things, all but measuring the bases to show that it's the same here as it is back home. Well, you, sometimes you have to get your players into that mindset and let them know that it's not a bigger stage than what you play on each and every game. Ball hit to the third base, or first baseman, Devin Carson. She fields it, steps on the bag, and there's one away. They used the same ball in practice and brought it here to Fort Dodge and said it's the same ball. On right now for Clark. A few nerves are probably starting to settle in, but you have to make sure you make every play when the ball comes to you. Look it all the way into the glove. Make sure you get that second and third out. Katie Norton. Popped out, had a single, and grounded out. Looks at a strike, one and one. Norton, the senior. Stands in, the bat up. Swung on, just got a piece of it to make it one and two. 
One of the things that the Clark Lady Indians have with them that they travel with is a small toilet. <laughs> and they want to flush away, flush it away. You make a bad play in the field, you come in, you flush it. It used to make noise. It doesn't make any noise so much. They've used it so much. They said it sometimes randomly will flush on its own. So, you know, they make the mistakes, and that's one of those things that you mentally prepare for. That's how you mentally prepare your team. You, you talk about, hey, you make a mistake, let's flush it away. Get rid of it, go on to the next play. You can't let it linger because one mistake will lead to another. So that's their way of dealing with any kind of errors or any kind of mistakes or a strikeout or whatever it might be. Just get rid of it, flush it down and then move on to the next player or the next batter or whatever it might be. Worked a lot on that mental game this year. Chopper hits a short. Bakley over to first to Carson. And the Lady Jays are down to their final out. And that is twice that Bakley has charged the ball and short hopped it. She's got a great glove out there at shortstop got on top of that ball and made the strong throw over to first for the second out. Emily Wilson, the junior, she's not ready to be done playing. The pitch is upstairs for a ball. Wilson, a single back in the first, a walk in the third, and a single in the fifth. She's two for two. The pitch strike. called strike one and one. See if Bemis gets her to go chasing after a pitch out of the zone. Bemis winds and deals in the dirt, trying to get them to chase, see if they're anxious. And sometimes when you have a hitter up there, you're down to your last out, they're a little bit out in front on their toes, and that change of pace pitch, that off-speed pitch, gets them swinging right through it. Popped up and lifted out of play, and Clark now is a strike away from a state championship. As we've mentioned before, Wilson does have home run power. They were runners up in 2013. They were champs in 95. In their third trip. How's the story go? Foul out of play. This one's not over yet. Bondurant Farrar needs a base runner. Wilson cannot do it alone. She can only extend the game. The 3-2. Ground ball foul. And now you're down your full count. Now what you're trying to do is just put it in play. You need to get on base right now. The home run would be nice if you could get it, but you would like to have some base runners. So that's her job right here. Eight strikeouts. Ground ball up the middle. And it's a hit for Wilson. The tying run comes to the plate for Bondurant Farrar. Keely Bycroft. Wilson does her job, goes three for three. Now an opportunity for the pitcher to help herself, maybe tie this ball game up, but Coach Dial is going to go out and talk to her team. I think you're probably going to hear her say, okay, just relax. That one runner doesn't mean anything right now. Let's concentrate on the hitter. Okay, here's what she's done, right? She's up the middle a lot on us, okay? So we have the option for second base right there. Okay, still working back there. Um, slow this down. One pitch at a time, that's all it is, okay? Right now, let's go, come on. Slow it down. Where have we heard that one before? Get another one if we go overtime. You just don't want it to get at that pace where they start stringing hits together in this situation and get that big two out rally. And you're one pitch at a time. Let's just go after this hitter. Bycroft, 0 for 3 today. As we approach. Pop fly, it's gonna be out of play. As we approach, we're just after 4.15 on Friday, July 25th, 2014. On a nice, hot, muggy day. 
in Fort Dodge. Libby Bemis, the senior, up 0-1, swung on and missed. And again, the Lady Jays are down to their final strike. Bemis just rearing back and going after Bycroft. And you can tell she wants to end it right here. She's not gonna mess around and she's just digging deep and gonna throw a little heat. The pitch outside. That's good hitting to lay off that pitch because you know it's a, an anxious spot, Laura. It's good discipline at the plate because <laughs> you want to put the bat on the ball, put it in play, and be able to hold up. That's a great job. Another one sails high. This is Bemis' last game in a Clark uniform. Off speed, popped up behind home. Catches in and out of the glove after a collision between the catcher, between Carson and Andrew, right in front of the dugout. Great effort. That's where you need to have some communication and uh, Coach Dial's gonna go out and check and see if both of them are okay. They, they did collide pretty hard, but they're gonna check things out and make sure that everybody's okay. You can see that <laughs> Carson probably had the best beat on it and then Andrew comes in and they collide and the ball pops free. Andrew's shoulder popped it out. Tough play, we talked about that foul ball, that spin is so different. Usually you want your fielder to make that play because they can see it better. But we'll do it again. Keeley Bycroft at the plate. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Lined into right, over the, over the head of the right fielder. Here comes Wilson, she's gonna score. And the Lady Jays have cut the lead to one, six, five in the top of the seventh. Sometimes when you get a play like that, you drop a foul ball. That next pitch, that hitter comes right back and makes you pay for it. And Bycroft did. She laces one into right field all the way to the fence and makes this a one-run ball game. Wilson scores all the way from first. Twice, the Lady Jays have been down to their last strike. And to this point, have staved off elimination. Five, 10, and five. For the Von Durant Ferrar Lady James, six, nine, and one. For the Clark Lady Indians. Two outs, top of the seventh. Annika Ekstam will dig in. She struck out twice and grounded out. Lifted in the air, popped up behind the plate, but out of play, just out of play. These hitters from Bondurant going after the first pitch, popping them up, popping them up foul. So they don't have the opportunity to catch the ball, make the out, but uh, they are being aggressive at the plate. And so you gotta like that. They're going up there with a lot of confidence and they're challenging Bemis, but Bemis is challenging them right back. Called strike to Exton. And for the third straight batter, the Lady Jays have two strikes. And the Clark Lady Indians are a strike away from a state title. The pitch. Come on, come Hit. on. In the air, it's gonna score. Here comes the run. We're tied at six. Annika Exton comes through with a single to right, scoring Keeley Bycroft. We're tied at six in the top of the seventh. Well, the last three hitters, Bemis has gotten ahead, 0-2 in the count, gotten worked ahead, and these hitters have battled at the plate, been able to stay alive, and put the ball into play and tie this game up. Aaron Henley will now step in, the sophomore. Flied out in the second. Flied out in the fourth. Had a double in the sixth. What can she do here in the seventh? Looks at an off-speed pitch. 
Now, if you're Clark, you just have to settle down and get out of this inning. Just don't want to give up that go-ahead run and then get your time at the plate in the bottom of the seventh. The pitch popped up and out of play. You know, that, that's got to be a little disheartening for a team that was leading three different times, gotten the opponent down to their last strike, only to come out of this inning tied up. And so you've got it. There you go. You go back to what they carry around with them, that little toilet. Flush it away. Forget about it. They've got to have a good mindset when they get back into that dugout. You heard the We Believe chant. Both teams using it. Both believing they can win. That's why they're on this big stage. Fouled back into the screen again. Count remains at two and two. You don't play for a state title if you don't think you can win. Absolutely not. And I think that's what differentiates a lot of these teams up here in Fort Dodge. They believe that they can win. They don't think that anybody is going to beat them. And, and it makes them very tough to beat when you have that attitude. Bemis steps and throws to first, retires. The Lady Jays, but not before they score two. I did not expect a big speech from her. It's exactly what I expected her to do. Coach Dial just said, here we go. And I think that the, the reason I say that is because she talked about you have to flush it and don't make a big deal about it. It's like we've been here before. And if she, she would erode everything she's done throughout the season to get to this point if she would have changed what she just did in that huddle. Right, and and that's just, and I think that's probably what the players expected out of her as well. And, and that's got to be their mindset. Okay, bottom of the seventh. We've got three outs to win it. Let's see if we can get some runners on base and hoist the trophy. Three times. Bondurant Farrar was down to their last strike. Three times the Clark Lady Indians were a strike away from a state title. And each time, Bondurant Farrar came through with a hit. Emily Wilson scored. And they did this all, Laura, with two outs. Yeah, the first two hitters went down right away. One, two. And then Wilson starts off the, the hit parade with a base hit. A couple of hits later, they're tied up. Carly Robbins. Sarah Andrew and Sydney Redmond do up for Clark. Chasing that second state title. The pitch upstairs for a ball, one and one. Robbins, a single, a single, and a strikeout. Bycroft, what does she have left in the tank? Robbins, what can she produce at the plate? Let's find out, the pitch upstairs, two and one. She's had a good game here a year ago. She was on that all-tournament team, making a bid to be on the all-tournament team again this year. And in a big spot, Robbins is, looking to lead off the inning and get that first base runner on. Swung on and missed. Good pitch up and out of the zone. That hard to lay off spot. Robbins, a senior, plays left field. The pitch, off speed, ripped foul, deep to left, up, up, away, a walk-off home run, a walk-off home run. The Clark Lady Indians win on a home run to left field. Carly Robbins, redemption tastes sweet for the Lady Indians. Oh my, what a way to go. Boy, just Her like that. home run of the season and for the second time in school history. The Lady Indians are state champions. Dramatic. 
Breathtaking, heart-stopping, emotional beyond belief, Carly Robbins hits a walk-off home run to win the state title in Class 3A. That is what every kid dreams about. Usually they dream about it with two strikes, or yeah, two yeah. strikes and two outs, bases loaded. Right. But yeah, same, hey, same, same version of the take, dream. That's they'll take it, anyway. it either way. And what a <laughs> shot, too. Never a doubt no after doubt. it left her bat. And that is just what a turn of events. You know, Bondurant comes back to tie it up. And all of a sudden, here we are, one hitter into the bottom of the seventh, line drive, home run. The Iowa Farm Bureau Board of Directors, District 6. From Clark, Allison Deutsch. From Bondurant Farrar, Keeley Bycroft. From Clark, Vanessa Bakley. From Bondurant Farrar, Emily Wilson. From Clark, Carly Robbins. From Mid Prairie, Amber Crawl. From East Marshall, Mariah Fritz. From East Marshall, Ashley Allen. From Green County, Marissa Promise. From Bondurant Farrar, Ashley Burroughs. And the Class 3A captain of the all-tournament team from Clark, Libby Bemis. Lots of great softball talent on that 3A all-tournament team. Allison Deutsch from Clark, Keeley Bycroft, the pitcher from Bondurant, Vanessa Bakley, Emily Wilson from Bondurant for our Carly Robbins from Clark, Amanda Crawl from Mid Prairie, a couple of East Marshall players, Mariah Fritz and Ashley Allen, Marissa Promise from Greene County, Ashley Burroughs, and Libby Bemis. Now it's time to prevent the trophy. Good we'll time to see this uh, presentation. The Iowa Farm Bureau, title sponsor of the Girls Athletic Union. Presenting awards are members of the IGHSAU Board of Directors, Greg Ebeling, Greg Thomas, George Tracy, and Kevin L. Wood. Congratulations to the runner-up in Class 3A, head coach Roger Rowland, and the Lady Jays from Bondurant Farrar on an outstanding 2014 softball season. And now, your 2014 Class 3A State Softball Champions, head coach Lindsey Dial and the Indians from Clark.
that never gets old for me to watch the trophy presentation. You know, especially after the dramatic ending that we had to this ball game and how excited those young ladies are. Incredible finish. I don't believe what I just saw is, a, is appropriate for that ball game. A walk-off home run. Incredible finish, dramatic end. You expected a good ball game. I don't know if you expected this good of a one. I don't know if we expected this exciting of a ball game, but these two met a year ago. Bondurant won it. This year, the tables are turned. Clark gets to take home the hardware. It is a team game. It took the entire team from Clark to win it, but the hero is Carly Robbins with a dramatic shot, no doubt about it, home run to propel her team to a state championship. The Clark Lady Indians of Osceola are your 2014 Class 3A state champions. They win 7-6. We've got two more to play. If they're anything like this, we got a doozy of an evening ahead. For Laura Leonard, for Brent Bloom, I'm Paul Yeager and the entire Iowa Public Television crew. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Softball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Whether you live in rural Iowa or in the big city, the Iowa Network Services family of companies and your local provider are working together to keep you connected by offering technology and business solutions like internet, data networking, and other business services. The INS family of companies keeping communities connected today and tomorrow. Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Softball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service.